Hi guys, the last 12 months has seen a real shift in the language used by the mainstream parties in Ireland. Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and also Sinn Féin have begun to speak more about immigration when it was considered by some to be a taboo. It is important to have frank discussions but not to allow certain elements to take control of the narrative. Extremists have always tried to use this as a platform to boost their numbers and gain power. But they have been thwarted in the past by the general public's repulsion for their politics. However, a growing crisis is allowing them to take advantage of the situation and Sinn Féin's Mary Lou MacDonald presents it very well here. The issue being housing. Just to say firstly, I don't know anybody who is in favour of open borders. I'm certainly not. We okay, um, before we get on to the rest of this, can we please shut down this stupid discussion about open borders? I hear it all the time. It's normally people on the right saying that those on the left are advocates for open borders, be it in the United Kingdom, be it in Ireland. It's a stupid position that doesn't exist. I've yet to meet anyone who says we should have open borders. Nobody is advocating for that, but for some reason we have to shut it down, we have to respond to it. It's not a real position. Nobody's saying we shouldn't have actually any checks on people coming in or going out of the country. Nobody. I've yet to meet anyone who actually advocates for that. We have a rules-based system and you can have a view as to its efficiency, how it's resourced, how it might change, but you shouldn't pretend that it uh, doesn't exist. Uh, I understand fully that government made a mistake from the get-go in not having proper consultation and communication with communities. And by that, I mean, Mary, not simply dropping a leaflet or last-minute briefings of public reps, but going into communities and talking to people in community mm -hmm. development and youth work and sporting organisations, all of the good people all across our communities who know their communities inside and out, who are constructive, decent people and for whom the inn is not full uh, and who would wish to be positive uh, and reasonable and rational and indeed very, very welcoming. And I think this has been a huge, huge error. And we said this from the get-go to the minister and the government not to go at that in a proactive way. And unfortunately, we're seeing the outworking of that now in communities where there is anxiety and angst and a feeling of being disrespected and ignored. Uh, for others, a feeling of fear, not least mm -hmm. for people coming to a strange place, having suffered uh, real trauma. And then the third consequence has been to embolden a very small number of people who believe that they can bully everyone else and up to and including setting fire uh, to but is, is a reality in our communities, which is this. If you're an individual or a family, who can't afford your rent, can't get rental accommodation, is on a housing list, can't get housed, and you have a government who for a decade and more has not responded to your needs, who are demonstrating no scale or capacity to meet your housing need. If your child is raising their own child in the box room of your family home on the one hand, and then you hear that others are coming to the country and you see equally no plan, you see chaos and a shambles, people say, where does that leave me? And that is a legitimate question. That is not a racist expression. That is a human expression of vulnerability and in some cases, desperation. And let me be very clear that the culpable party in this is not uh, people in communities who've waited and waited and are left in housing needs, okay. nor those who have come and who are vulnerable. The culpable do, party do, in this is the yeah, government. The culpable party is the government, who's completely correct. The government have dragged their feet over the last number of years by not producing enough affordable and social housing. They could, but they have decided not to, for economic reasons. They have preferred to allow the private sector to pick up the slack. A bit like the Tories in Britain, the, the government in Ireland have decided, well, we're actually going to let the private sector deal with this issue. We're not going to build enough for affordable and social housing. Uh, developers have made a lot of money out of this as well um, and pr and uh, property owners who are renting out properties are making a lot of money out of this as well too. So what it, what this has done is it has reduced the overall supply of housing and then when you had a crisis like the war in Ukraine and you had an influx of a, a, a significant number of refugees, there wasn't enough housing available but people had to be housed. 
So the private sector picked up some of that, but there was also uh, housing that had to be made available for uh, for refugees. The the Irish government took in uh, more per capita, I believe, than any other European country when it came to refugees from, from Ukraine. And this put a massive stress on housing. Uh, but housing was already a massive problem. Now, what the, the right wing are doing, and their advocates in the media, are saying, well, the problem is immigration. Yes, the problem is housing, but... If we didn't have all these immigrants, then we would have enough housing. No, that would not be the case because this was already a problem before. And focusing on immigration and refugees or asylum seekers allows the government off the hook because the government have not produced enough affordable and social housing and the pressure should be on them to do that. Now, this is not something you're going to be able to fix overnight. But it is interesting how... All the parties have started now talking about immigration. I think the, the media have been able to keep a valve or a lid on this for a number of years, but now it has come off. And unfortunately, certain elements within society, a, a small section of society, are trying to profit from this. And they have, set, to a certain extent, succeeded. They have turned the public against the idea of immigration. But the problem with housing and immigration is, the core problem is there isn't sufficient housing. If there was sufficient housing, the number of refugees coming in probably wouldn't be an issue. It wasn't really an issue in the past. Certain elements tried to, tried to make it an issue, but they couldn't get traction. Now they're getting traction because the government have been asleep at the wheel. Something will have to change. A change of government, uh, an investment in affordable and social housing, building council houses, provide, making sure that councils build enough housing um, for families. Otherwise, you're going to see this resentment and this resentment is going to grow. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.